to order. The Board will be considering tonight's agenda in the following order. Approval of the minutes from April 22, 2013. The Town Planner's Report. Under new business will be the 10 Clinton Road Private Access Way Permit. Other business will be under Building Permit Notification Zoning Amendment. Normal High Water Line Definition Zoning Amendment. Then we'll have any public comment on items not on tonight's agenda, followed by adjournment. So first item, approval of the minutes. Any comments? I have one, Caroline. one comment, and maybe it's just maybe it's just me. And the under Robinson Woods in the third paragraph, one, two, three, four, five lines down, it says they will use bridging of areas that are not wet all year. And I would assume that that should be they will use bridging of areas that are wet all year and that the word not should come out of that sentence? Um, I think what he said was that they're going to bridge areas even though they're not wet. Oh, okay. And the bridging is <coughs> in place to protect those areas when it is Okay. So then we could add even though in there. Yes. That is how I remember it. Do you? I'll go with that. You'll go with that? Okay. Even though? Even okay. though yeah. Okay. That was, it. that was it. Thank you. Anyone else? Any comments? Questions? No, nope. I looked them over. I thought they were good. Okay. A motion then? Okay. Thank you. Um, and any further discussion? All those in favor of the minutes? One, two, three. Henry, any opposed? And you were absent, so abstaining. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five of us. One abstention. And uh, the motion was made by uh, Liza. It was seconded. No, was that backwards? I think it was made. Motion by Patricia. Okay. And Peter. Yeah. Second. Second by Peter. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. So that's the motion. Next item is the town planner's report. Well, I'm very pleased to report that the council was very busy with a lot of the work that the planning board has been working on for the past several months. Um, on Monday night, uh, June 10th, the town council adopted the new subdivision ordinance. Uh, they're going, that's going to take effect July 10th, and you've all got new copies. We've also got the new ordinance uh, posted on the website as of today, so that's available for everyone. Uh, I wanted to pass on that uh, there were comments made that the planning board was a very impressive group. They had done a very good job. Um, they noted that the presentation to the ordinance committee by the planning board chair was very thorough, very informative, and that went a long way towards their willingness to approve it pretty much um, unchanged. Um, so I wanted to note the whole exchange between the Ordinance Committee and the Planning Board was well done and the comments uh, to the whole Planning Board and in particular to the Chair about the work you had done. Uh, they also approved that night the daycare amendment. Um, that was changed a little by the Ordinance Committee so they went from a recommendation by the Planning Board to limit day camps to six children. The Ordinance Committee increased that to ten children and the Council increased it to twelve children. And the planning board had recommended that the duration, uh, daily duration, would be four hours. The ordinance committee left it at four hours. The town council increased it to six hours. And it was passed by a vote of five to two with two members of the council not voting for it who were on the ordinance committee because of those increases. So I just thought you'd like to know. And um, the Conservation Commission is continuing to work on a Greenbelt plan. They've held two forums. And their next meeting, where they will be discussing the plan, will be July 9th. And the next item on our agenda is 10 Clinton Road Private Access Way Permit. Winslow Palesbury is requesting a private access way permit to create a buildable lot located at 10 Clinton Road under Section 19-7-9 Private Access Way Permit Amendment. Um, the, I, the next item um, will be addressed as following. There will be an introduction of the item by the town planner, all by a presentation by the applicant, and then the board will discuss the application followed by a vote. Maureen, do you have an overview? You could 
Thank you. Sure. Um, hopefully this looks familiar to everyone. This is the private access way plan that the planning board granted in March. Um, at the time, there, there uh, were several concerns with the approval. This is a lot at the end of Clinton Road. It's a four-acre lot in a zone where the minimum lot size is 20,000 square feet. And the planning board did grant approval that night to create a second lot that did not have adequate frontage on a town road with 10 conditions on the approval. Uh, the applicant has worked on the 10 conditions and has been able to satisfy nine of the 10. Um, the 10th one is the one that, that was trying to address the extra buildable potential of the land area. And the planning board had asked that the applicant either come up with a master plan showing how they might further develop the land if that was their choice and to do so in a manner that made sense or to forever close the door on the potential for further development. Um, the planning board post uh, put on the condition that an enforceable conservation easement be placed that had third party enforcement powers. The applicant uh, met with the land trust and they were unwilling to hold an easement. Uh, the town, I asked the town's attorney for some assistance. The town's attorney expressed concerns with the word conservation easement used in this way. And so what the applicant's attorney and the town's attorney and I came up with was this idea of a reciprocal restriction where there would be a note on the plan that was what you were trying to avoid originally. But there would be a note on the plan that said each lot would be limited to one single family dwelling plus accessory structures. So if there was any effort to further subdivide the land and, and add more structures, that would have to come back to the planning board. The other piece is that the applicant has agreed to place a reciprocal restriction on his deed and a restriction on the deed of the abutting lot, and each would be the enforcer of those restrictions, uh, which says that you also can't have more than one single family home plus accessory structures. So the idea is to replace the condition number three that the planning board originally imposed with another condition, well, a two-part condition instead. Okay, thank you. Uh, if the applicant would like to address the board, um, well, just she, did, she did most of it just then. <laughs> um, I'm Wynn Pillsbury. Uh, so yeah, like Maureen said, we, we got the approval with 10 conditions back in the 20th of March, and uh, we've met all nine of them except one, which was the restrictive um, conservation easement held by a third party. And I've tried in good faith to find somebody or some entity or whatever to, you know, take on something like that and after talking to my attorney and he talking to the town's attorney you know it turns out it would have to be for public it would have to have access by the public in order to be a conservation easement I can't remember their exact verbiage but uh, and then also the land trust we had the, the land trust um, the head of the land trust come over and walk the property he wasn't he said there's no way we can really utilize this because there's no connection to the green belt really I mean you'd have to cross other people's property to get to connect it you know even though it is close it, you have to cross roads and property so with that we've come up with this restrictive uh, uh, whatever it's called covenant a restrict reciprocal restrictive covenant that the attorney drew up basically you know the, the abutter would enforce my property, I'll enforce hers, saying that it can never be further developed. Um, we did change the note on the plan there, where I've highlighted it, number, note number three, that was per the attorney's, you know, requesting that we put that exact verbiage in there as well. And, uh, and plus the deeds, the, the original deeds that we had drawn up back after the first workshop, we, we wrote right into the deeds. Each separate deed says it, and it's recorded. So with that, you know, I'm just, requesting an amendment to that one, you know, that one uh, number three, I believe, was it number three, condition number three? It was. Yeah. That the board goes with this plan, you know, sign off on the plan with that restriction. Uh, I think note number two also says, by approval of this plan, you know, it can no longer be further developed. And, you know, personally, I don't think it could be, you know. I mean, all this stuff is on the other side of the pond. There's absolutely, I mean, you have to build bridges and, do some major work to get over to that side or tear down the other neighborhood to get over there, you know. So with that, I ask for the board's approval for this amendment. Thank you. 
And with that, anyone on the board have any comments, questions? Seems like a good solution to me to a very dicey problem. <laughs> Interesting never, problem. I never knew it would be this complicated. <laughs> I have a question for Maureen. Why isn't the um, first note, 3A, which just sends the uh, any attempt to subdivide either property back to the planning board, why is that not sufficient? The board could find that that is sufficient. I think there was concern by board members that you would be presented with an, un an unpleasant situation. Five, ten years hence, um, you would have people who were proposing to create additional lots. There was value to be had on the table, and there would be pressure put on the planning board to, um, find, to accept however they could get into that land, even if it wasn't a well-planned approach. And if you're going to be willing to allow people to further develop this property and get the economic value out of it, you ought to look at a master plan now because you could be authorizing construction of a home in the most logical place to create access later on. So the, the idea was, you know, think your, think your way through this or forever close the door. And I, I think the board understood that you had, have received requests in the past to change approvals and you've done it. I think my guess is that it was fresh in your mind, the change to the building envelope in Cross Hill, where there was the, you know, the, the hint of a view easement, but not the actual view easement. And so there was, there was resistance to just the note. Liza was actually next. That answered my question. That was it? Thanks. Okay. Yeah. My recollection is that uh, we were trying to sort of assure perpetuity of the restriction, and the one loophole, if you will, would be if the owners down the road at some point of parcel A and parcel B got together and decided to change it, or if one person bought both parcel A and parcel B, the restriction theoretically could have been eliminated. Um, but the amount of remaining land is pretty slight, and I, th I think with the fact that it would have to come back to get permission in the face of a fairly strong statement of intention from the current owner, I guess I don't have a problem going with this solution. I think the, the protection that we sought for the, the two parcels is pretty, pretty darn strong. Okay. Anyone else? No? Then would anyone like to make a motion? All right, motion for the board to consider. Findings of fact. Wynn Pillsbury is requesting an amendment to the previously approved private access way permit for 10 Clinton Road. The, the amendment would revise condition number three, requiring a third party restriction on future development. Number two, the applicant has made a good faith effort to comply with condition three and has satisfied all the other conditions. Number three, the applicant has submitted an alternative condition that addresses the concerns resulting in the imposition of the original Condition 3. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Wynn Pillsbury for an amendment to the previously approved private access way permit approval, Condition 3, for 10 Clinton Road, be approved with the following conditions. 3A, a note be added to the plan as follows. Lots A and B as shown on this plan are limited to one principal dwelling and associated accessory structures per lot. The restriction is agreed to by the owners of each property as a restriction imposed by the planning board in the approval of the private access way. This restriction may not be amended or removed without the approval of the planning board. No development is allowed in the conservation restriction easement area. 3B, that reciprocal restrictive covenants for lot A and B that limit development to one principal dwelling and accessory structures be signed by the lot owners and recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. Second. Carol and second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? All those opposed? That passes 6 nothing. Thank, Thank you, you very much.
Okay, the next item on our agenda is building permit notification zoning amendment. The Town Council has referred to the Planning Board a proposed amendment to the zoning ordinance that would require that a public notice be mailed when some building permits are issued. This would be found under Section 19-10-3, Amendments to the Zoning Ordinance. Uh, the application will be addressed in the following format. The Town Planner will provide an overview. The proposed amendment will be open for public comment. And the Board will then discuss the item, followed by a motion for the Board to consider. Maureen, do you have an overview for us? Sure. This is um, following up on the uh, workshop you had with the, concert, the, excuse me, the code enforcement officer. Uh, the code enforcement, we have a new code enforcement officer, Ben McDougall, who is concerned that our current definition of normal high water line is vague and that it results in a case-by-case -case determination of normal high water line. He would like something that's a little bit more predictable and consistent and is recommending that the town replace our current definition with the normal high water line definition that the state uses as part of shoreland zoning. So um, what you have before you is a recommendation to adopt a normal high water line definition that mirrors the state in all but one, in exactly the state language, and then also adopting a coastal wetland definition. And the coastal wetland definition has been changed from the state definition so that it refers to all areas below the highest annual tide elevation, which is what the planning board wanted it changed from. I think the original one was a a, let's see, maximum spring tide level uh, at the last workshop. The planning board really wanted it changed to this. I asked the code enforcement officer and he felt that this was not a significant enough change that it deviated from his desire to stick with the state definition. So this, this hopefully is as close as we can get to what the planning board would like to see. And for tonight's meeting, if you're okay with the draft, you would be tabling this draft to the next meeting where you would hold a public hearing to co consider a recommendation on this amendment. That was really good. When you started with code enforcement officer, I thought we were talking building permits, and then I started hearing water. I think the next one is building permits? The next one is building permits, yes. Okay. Did we just hear the... I'm sorry. I did the wrong one. Yeah, well, it took me a moment when we started. That you know what? Very Let's cool. just... No, I can do the other one. Then we'll just pretend I did that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have stopped you earlier, but you're no. saying all the right thing, code enforcement. Yeah, you should have stopped me yeah. earlier. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> building permits, Hi. different thing. Uh, building permits, this came out of, again, uh, a concern by the council in response to complaints from folks that they were not hearing about building permits that were being issued within a, within a quick enough time to be able to appeal the building permit issuance. And... Uh, lots of, well, not some people were getting their building permit not starting in 30 days. Uh, once neighbors found out about them, they were sending appeals to the zoning board. The zoning board was not allowed to hear the merits of the appeal because they were no longer timely. So the town right now is working with three lawsuits, and that's why this amendment is before the board. Uh, what it would do is it would require that whenever a building permit is issued that is within 125 feet of the normal high water line or within 10 feet of a setback, um, that a notice would be sent out to all abutters within 50 feet of the property line where the building permit was issued. So this would be, again, something that if you're satisfied with the language, you would table it from tonight's meeting to the next month's meeting where you could hold a public hearing and consider recommendation to the town council. Thank you. Um, because this is open to the public, I would like to invite, would either one of you like to speak on this issue? This is your opportunity. You're both all set. Okay. Then, with that, um, does the board have any comments? No comments from the board? I thought we had a good discussion at our last workshop. Yes, we did get into this at our last workshop. We did discuss um, 50 feet, why we chose 50, why we haven't changed it. We did bring that up. Um, any comments over here? This, this captures what we discussed in the workshop and what we came to as the conclusion of our proposal to the town council. So, looks good to me. Okay. 
Um, um, and I would once again recap by saying the code enforcement officer did recommend the 50 feet, and that will get all the abutters. Um, this seems to be the appropriate notification group, um, and it's also an appropriate allocation of staff time. Would anyone like to make a motion? I will. I will. Ann. Motion for the board to consider, be it ordered that the proposed building permit notification zoning amendment be tabled to the July 16th, 2013 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Do I hear a second? Look at Joe. Go ahead, Joe. And um, all those in favor? And opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. All right. Are you going to make her say all that stuff over here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really want to listen to it, yeah. We cover some of the same territory. When you start talking about from 125 feet from the water, I just, so I'm sorry about no, that. No, no, no. It's me. Um, anyways, the next item on our agenda is normal high water line definition zoning amendment. The Town Council has referred to the Planning Board a proposed amendment to replace the current normal high water line definition with the standard state definition. And this would fall under the Zoning Ordinance Section 19-10-3, Amendments to the Zoning Ordinance. This will um, also be open to public comment, and then the Board will have a discussion followed by a, um, a motion for the Board to consider. At this time, are you, would you like to make any comments on this item? Thank you. Okay. Then the board, once again, it is now open for any comments, any questions? I think she got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a, a lot of discussion going around at the workshop, and I think she hit it. <laughs> yes, um, we did discuss this uh, in quite a bit detail. Um, this wording is exactly from the DEP um, chapter 1000. It was uh, from June of 96. It's, it's practically word for word. So then at this time, no further discussion or comments? Then would somebody like to make a motion? Yes. A motion for the board to consider to be in order that the proposed normal high water line definition zoning amendment be tabled to the July 16, 2003 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. And it's... I'm sorry? Did you not read the site 2013 on 2003? Oh, I think that's true. 2013, sorry. And we hear a second. second. Carol Ann, second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? That passes also unanimously. Okay. Then, at uh, this time, the next item would be um, our adjournment. Would anyone like to uh, make a motion for adjournment? Sure. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. I'll second that. All right. <laughs> and then, um, any discussion on the motion to adjourn? <laughs> no? Okay. All those in favor of adjournment? All those opposed? And that passes unanimously. All right. Um, the next, uh, what we're going to do, we have adjourned, but the um, board um, will be.